The Hilbert Transform is a mathematical blockbuster. It finds use in many different application areas, and in the case of DSP, one of the things we can use it for is analytic signal formation. Let's see what we mean by that. We're looking here at a Simulink model. In fact, it uses the DSP Speedster tool, and there's a pulse generator coming in here periodically every uh, 300 samples with that shape, and it's we pipe down here, we're calling it X of K, and it hits this Hilbert transform filter. Well, this is a machine which carries out the Hilbert transformation, but unlike, uh, say, where you have the Fourier transform, you pass from one domain into another, so you go from time to frequency. Here, you, you have a time function. It comes out still a time function. It'll be differently shaped, of course, and that's the characteristic of Hilbert transforms. Uh, likewise, you could do the same in the frequency domain. You could have a, 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 an occasion to take the Hilbert of a frequency function. It would still be a frequency function. So it's a little bit strange from that point of view. Let's have a look at the filter that's going to do this job on our time signal. I'll go down here through this CPIG analyzer and to find its uh, credentials. And I see straight away that the impulse response uh, is odd symmetric. It's real. I see the gain of it is, uh, well, on the one hand quite flat, but uh, plunging down to zero at Nyquist frequency. This is not the ideal situation uh, for Hilbert because we would like it to be completely wide band, in fact full band here, uh, but because we're using an odd number of coefficients, that's precluded. But the thing we really care about uh, is this area right here, this has got to go down to zero and we'd like for it to get down very quickly. There is a very narrow band notch uh, effectively happening right there. And this is always the case with all Hilberts, whether they have an even number or odd number of coefficients. You must have this. Let's have a look at the unwrapped phase for this. Of course it is linear phases and symmetry su su suggest. If we strip this off, we have a look at the phase free uh, gain or magnitude I like to call it and we see here that apart from this little dip right out here at plus and minus Nyquist uh, we see this thing uh, come zips down through here at DC uh, and this since this is plotted in terms of imaginary because we had real and odd up here we'll have to have imaginary and odd in the frequency domain once we strip away that linear phase uh, so what we've got is basically what's called a, a minus 90 degree phase shifter or a function with a transfer function of minus j signum of f and here it is completely flat and going back that way as well. So that's the characteristic that we're operating with and we're going to take that out of the output of this filter, pump it into this scope right here on the white trace that we'll be looking at and we're going to compare it well, on the yellow trace with the original signal where nothing's been done to it. Well, almost nothing. We've had to put a rendezvous delay here so that we can line these two things up because inherently in this 281 coefficient, well, 281 minus 1 over 2 is the group delay of this linear phase filter. So there'll be 140 samples worth of delay. This one needs to have it as well or else they won't line up. So let's see them line up on this scope right here and here it is let me get rid of the white one and you see that's the original pulse that's coming in albeit it's been delayed quite a lot it originally had its own 10 samples worth of delay that's why this is sitting at 150 uh, here is its uh, gain uh, the spectrum of that signal and here we see the Hilbert transform was some sort of strange looking shape it's got strange ears on the edge. That's always the case that we're going to have. Let me go and get us another one, uh, just for kicks. This one is the one I really want to concentrate on, this notched pulse here, uh, because it's got a little bit of DC. So he, here's going to be the pulse coming in this time. And let me scale it up so we see it full scale. And now you can see that the yellow one has got this strange notch in the middle of the time domain. Uh, and uh, a, a different kind of strange uh, Hilbert transform in white. In the frequency domain, you can see the effect of that DC notch. It has brought this yellow thing down to zero. 
right there at the middle. Uh, I can toggle this on and off and you see the original spectrum and the Hilbert transform lying quite on top of it except for right at DC. Well I want to see what's happening in the rest of this. As I go out here I'm going to form by taking the original sig signal, albeit with this delay of rendezvous delay in here, uh, and I'm going to join it together with a single signal, but it's going to have the component which is the Hilbert multiplied by a J. So we're going to have a complex valued signal going out this line right here. It's going to be called the analytic signal, which is the original plus J times its Hilbert, uh, discounting the question of delay. Let me go up here to uh, the gate of one. Have a, have a look at this on the trace. This is going to be the original thing. Uh, this is going to be this new thing called the analytic signal. So let me uh, bring that in to my plot and scale it up. And you can see now that uh, if I kill the white one, you see the original signal. And since it has no imaginary component, this trace down here, which is devoted to the imaginary, because of course we've got an in phase and a quadrature component to any complex signal, uh, it has nothing to contribute in that way. And this is just that same spectrum that we saw earlier. But now we restore the yellow, which is now the, the uh, analytic signal, and get rid of the yellow one, if you like. And you see now something quite different. You see that it, it's, uh, it has two pieces um, and the uh, frequency domain situation is completely single-sided. Well, almost completely. There's a little bit of funny business right around DC as we go down into that notch, but out here we've completely shorn off the negative frequency part of the original spectrum. In fact, what this produces is twice the positive frequency portion, that is a scale factor of two, uh, of the positive frequency portion of the original. Let me get that factor of two back in there so I can see it coming in. So I'm going, to, I'm going to multiply the original by two just so I can line up the pictures, uh, have a full scaling of this. And now you can see exactly what's going on down here. The yellow one is completely lying on top of the white one except right in this region of DC and this is what happens. So all of the yellow negative frequency material has been killed and destroyed by formation of this analytic signal. Well, in, in other words, it's a repackaging of the original information. The negative frequency information that got lost over here from the yellow one has uh, effectively been maintained in the fact that you've got twice the dimensionality in terms of time because you've now got an in phase and a quadrature component. But this repackaging then can allow us to do different things. For example, single sideband amplitude modulation.